gentlemen, welcome to a Roaring Hub Day Wednesday session of Real Talk with me, Emma G. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. You're staying positive. You're wearing sunscreen because it's bloody hot outside. Uh, but I'm really, really thrilled to be joined by the indomitable and inspiring and very, very busy and creative and... So, sorry, I got all, go. All, <laughs> all of the things, Mr. Jay Keating from Songwriters Association of Washington, D.C. Hello, my love. Hi, Emma. How don't are you? Me. Please don't yeah. leave me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I was busy. I, you know, I said I could spare a minute. I didn't say like 50 of them. I mean, we might we might even go for fifty two if we're feeling oh, you, know, well, you know a little bit fun. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but how are you, man? How's, what's going on? How's how's I, you know? I'm good. I'm a little. I, I, I'm feeling like a one arm paper hanger these days because we're doing so many things at Saw and at Focus Music and um, it, I, you know, even with great people helping you, it's just a full time job to do as much as we're trying to do. Right, 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 right. So tell me a little bit about like how what is Saw. For those right. who don't know, and how did you get involved with the Songwriters Association of Washington? Well, um, it's the Songwriters Association of Washington is a 30 plus year organization which was founded by local songwriters and grew into this organization that runs the Mid Atlantic Song Contest, which is one of the older song contests in the country. Um, and um, it is a, a, a local DMV area organization that does um, out teaching, education, outreach, concerts, showcases, as, as many different things as we can do. And we have been um, moving into the world of AV, luckily, a uh, year, two years before uh, the COVID crisis came along. So we were well established um, doing streaming, multi-camera AV and stuff like that. So we do everything we can to support, encourage, and grow uh, a music scene here in DC, especially for original artists, mm. Mm. which is how I came to meet you. I mean, that is, yes. There is, yeah. I mean, that was, uh, gosh, three years ago now, four years ago now? Yeah. Something like that. And you do incredible work. You, I mean, you're right, like completely uh, on, the, on the money when it comes to having to juggle a zillion and five things <laughs> at mm. a time. Um, so the, the Mid-Atlantic Songwriting Competition, tell me about that. What's... Well, the, Mid the, the, the MASC, as we call it, M-A-S-C, the Mid-Atlantic Song Competition. In fact, we're thinking about making masks that say mask on the front of them. We're, uh, we're in the process of designing those. But I um, we, we, uh, it is the way that we fund everything that we do. And it's also one of the ways that we grow and encourage artists. It is it is worldwide, although, although 80% of our uh, entries are from here. We get mm -hmm. entries from Japan, from the Philippines, from Canada, from South America. We get them from all over the world. And we used to be just a folk song um, contest, but now we have 13 categories. This year, we're going to have a video category. We're going to have a social justice category, although we'll probably no. call it something else because people have come to, to have mixed feelings about social justice as a word, oh, as a phrase. Oh, oh. So, uh, so yeah. we're we're the, we're doing this contest. There are thirteen different um, uh, categories, plus a lyrics only category, and um, we get. Uh, we, last year, I think we got thirteen hundred entries, and wow, um, uh, yeah. So we get we get a, a lot of. You can imagine having to listen to thirteen hundred original songs. It's a, it's and that's the 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 really intense work is getting judges and the amazing people do it. Mike Jaworek at, at, at the Birchmere always steps up and puts in some real good time. The people from Focus Music, people like Scott Moore, um, a lot of local um, luminaries who have uh, better things to do with their time. Uh, um, <laughs> and, and, and I have about eight friends who are uh, who have won Grammys in one form or another, and, and they uh, they always help me judge the finals so that we get some real high end quality in the final decisions. So, uh, so it's a it's a group effort and a months long effort just to judge the contest and to run it. It's going to open late this year because we usually open it in June. It's going to open in about the next few days um, here. And you can go to saw.org and get to that. You uh, um, or you can uh, just type in Mid Atlantic Song Competition and you'll find it. Mm, mm. Notice so I have a little saw dog org up over here. I mean, here. I love it. I love it. Marketing on point. I, I'm just, <laughs> you want to know why? What's he talking about? Just go there. Don't listen to me. Just go there. I love it. So, I mean, how did you 
because you you've been writing songs for a few minutes. Yes. How did you get? Tell I, me about your process. Tell well, me about well, well, the for magic. Me, yeah, for me, I had gotten into music. I was a touring music. I was a touring stand-up comic because I started writing songs and performing. And the, uh, one of the guys who uh, owned the cellar door said to me, "You're really great, but you don't." If you can imagine this, I was really shy on stage in between singing my songs. And he said, you know, because I would be like, don't do some BS. Don't you know, do some bullshit media yet yeah, talking between songs. Just be sincere. And he said, that's not going to work. You got to you got to figure out some way to relate to the audience in between. Right. So go up to the comedy club. And I went up to Garvin's up the street and did one set for them. They hired me immediately to open all over the area. I mean, they took me to Ocean City, to New York, to um, uh, mm -hmm. all the way down to Florida. And they kept giving me these jobs for more money than I'd ever made as a musician. Um, opening for comics as a musician. And then I said, how do I get paid for that? They said, write 45 minutes worth of material and you can do that. And there went eight years of my life. I was a touring middle act, first uh, opening and then a middle act a comic for about eight years in the eighties. And then I realized that music was what I loved uh, and and started doing that again and my income dropped. I mean, I was making a good middle-class living as a comic. Right. And then you know, doing the same amount of work, my income dropped in half being a musician. That's and, insane. And, but I, I got into commercials and film and TV and stuff. And then I decided I wanted to have a family. So I dropped out and dropped okay. out for good. And during all of this time, Saw exists and I don't have anything to do with it because I'm out of town all the time. I don't even know right. what's going on. And then when I started getting back into music, when my kids became teenagers, I ran into the infamous Ron Goad, who oh, came yes. to check out an open mic I was running. Of course. He said, come here, little boy. <laughs> you. I can imagine that. Yeah, That's yeah, totally no, yeah. something that Ron would do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I said, I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of musician. Uh, but he said, but he's, he said, you should be on the board. It's on. And I was, and then I kept going, I've got this idea and this idea and this idea. And they said, oh, shut up. Just take over and get out of their way. You know, so right. they, they sort of shoved me into the leadership position to shut me up. And, right. um, oh, and that's okay. So that's how, that makes sense. You yeah. know, all of the leaders that I know, myself included, just don't know how to shut up. So that, that yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah, just, just do it. Don't tell us about it. Just do it and make it look good. Like, yeah, We're yeah. sick of you talking. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm I'm super pumped about what you guys are doing and how you guys have um, have navigated the you know this COVID pandemic. Um, you mentioned obviously that you have uh, broadened the horizons a little bit for the social justice warriors. I don't use that term so much. I, I consider yeah. more of an artivist. Yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, I just uh, when when a word starts to have negative connotations for even part of people, I always try to say, let's find a new word that has no negative connotations for it. So I'm trying to find a word. I think we're going to call them freedom songs because we are going to have a social justice category, mm -hmm. and um, and something that. Because again, I, I, we really want people to feel like you're not being pigeonholed. We're just giving you this opportunity to express in this direction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is that um, like so going from music, to, sorry, from comedy music, comedic mm -hmm. music, uh, to comedy and then into into actual full time music? What do you think? I mean, why do you think it is that our our reputations, our careers as such as musicians tends to get so much flack that we do, you know, almost scrape by because we were just talking before, you know, you, you're connected with a crap load of really established, well-known musicians who play for Alanis Morissette, who play for Shakira, who tour the world doing epic, epic stuff. And I think there's this idea that, that oh, yeah. you once, you've, once and... you've made it, you've made it and you can... Yeah buy the Porsche and you can yes. do all the things. And the, the reality is very different. So can you tell me yeah, a the, bit more about that? Well, the, the reality is that um, there is some money in touring and music, but the owner of the band, whoever that is, if, and sometimes it's the whole band and sometimes mm -hmm. it's one or two members of the band, but whoever those mm -hmm. owners are, they're the ones who get to the split whatever profit money is made with their managers and, and everything like that. Everybody else is pay, getting paid union scale or sometimes a little more. And, and, you know, and, and different artists are generous, but even generous artists, um, uh, you know, you, you're only working when you're working. So if you're making 350 to $500 a show, which is, you know, decent music, uh, different money for a side person, um, that's great until suddenly you've got uh, three weeks or a month or two months where you're not working at all. And, and when you average that in, 
most uh, most working musicians at what you would consider the the arena level aren't mm -hmm. you know they're they're at best making a middle class or a lower middle class living at doing this if if they're working all the time if they're only working you know a couple months out of the year or three or four months when somebody goes on tour they're really scraping by and they have to find other ways to to support themselves and that's true at the top end of business at all the other layers of business of the of the music business you know you aren't making money and you have to mm. if you get into this business to make money you really have picked the wrong business um because uh, uh, you know the if you're if you're lucky and the odds are good you might be one of those people who hits it really big but if you're not lucky and you're really good you could just spend the, your life working as a working musician and be mm -hmm. always hand to mouth in terms of your uh surviving inside this business and one of the things that many of the music organizations and many people uh, do is they try to sell that idea of, I can tell you the secret. Oh, just come to my little seminar and I'll tell you how to get in here and get this done. And, and, and I really, I, no, no, don't say that. Say, I can come and tell you what the realities are and the best way to achieve this. But, but don't, you know, I, I really do chastise people all the time. Don't tell people you're going to make the money when you can't make enough money to do anything but teach about how to do this because it is so hard to do this you know and you know and and and, and so part of the reason that I've gotten into this uh, world of uh nonprofit how to talk to musicians stuff like that is that I really want to have a message about get into this for the right reasons and make sure you listen to and are developed by people who are developing and and talking to you for the right reasons mm. I can't tell you how many producers, agents, managers I've run into who just who will tell you anything they want to hear, but they want money. All they're doing mm -hmm. is trying to get money out of you. And they won't tell you, this is good, this is bad, here's what I see. You know, they won't they won't give you the really good advice that helps you hone your craft and hone your recordings and do stuff like that. They're more just thinking of you as a payday. Yeah. And yeah. and at the medium and low level, um, you know, there's so much exploitation of musicians that it's that one of my missions is to just educate musicians you know just don't you know go to these uh, seminars go uh, look for advice but but look for people who are telling you uh, respectfully what you could improve and and where they see you, you need help and, and so because those people aren't the people you go oh i don't want to hear what's wrong with me i want you to tell me how great i am but, right but when i'm for me i want to hear from somebody oh you you know you weren't making eye contact you weren't doing things i want to hear the things i'm doing wrong because the things I'm doing right will take care of themselves. And and so my part of my mission is is to start trying to get um, to get a fair shake for people who are trying at the low level to learn and understand about what the what, what it means to be in the music business. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it's very noble and I, it's really necessary. You know, one of the things that I mean, Granted, I grew up in another country, um, which is is relatively far away from the United States. But, um, you know, one of the things that I grew up realizing was, you know, how quickly the industry changes. And certainly it's changed considerably, even since I've been living here in the States. So, you know, from what I've seen, how people interact with one another and teach and things, it's like there's so many questions around, okay, so are cassettes now like still cool because they're hipster or yes. you know how do we apparently they are i don't know yeah, it's I just a press so LP. Yeah, everything everything old comes back again for one big you know i'm i'm a tracks didn't because they were just ridiculously <laughs> bad but I, I i had cassettes you know this is how old i am i had cassettes i sold cassettes on the road for yes, quite a few yeah. years so, yeah. i had cassettes also young man yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean there's also the the growing um you know questions around social media marketing and and streaming, um, and, streaming and, and and how to do this online and that for me that's one of the things that i've been learning and studying about too is you know it is actually smarter now for a, a good original artist to perhaps work on your YouTube or Vimeo presence and just create a, a fan base, a super fan base, yeah. um, before you try to tour too much. Because touring is fun, but as but as many a musician will tell you, it's a lost leader if you're not at a certain level. If you yeah. can't fill a 200 seat room, if you can fill a 100 seat room, you can make a lower class, middle to lower class living uh, touring around, but you can't make much more than that because 
again, you're making, you know, $700, $800, up to $1,000 a night uh, in these little clubs, and you got to pay for travel and room and board. I mean, I spent years sleeping on people's couches mm -hmm. in my car. I, you know, I was so cheap that only it, when I needed to shower would I ever rent a hotel room. And um, You wouldn't I, sleep on people's couches and then use their shower? Uh, no, I mean, when I, but I would sometimes be in places where I didn't know anybody. So I'd be staying in my car for two or three days. Oh, and then, gotcha. then it's time to get a hotel. I mean, I have to get a hotel. Cause, yeah. uh... <laughs> it's funny. I mean, you know, I, I've toured the, this, this country several times now and this, uh, you know, New Zealand several times, but um, couch surfing has been my godsend. Mm, yeah, no, it is. Yeah. It, and, and the wonderful people, and, and I would, I would uh, return the favor. People would come and stay. Uh, here uh, in in this area with me, who'd come through, but that was without that network, it would I would have had to lose money being on the road because hotels and and all that stuff uh, are it's expensive to do that. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the networking side of things because you've been in the industry for you know a couple of years, yeah. <laughs> just a few. A minute. A minute. Uh, <laughs> um, and you've met some incredible humans along your way that are, you know, that are established musicians, both nationally and internationally. Um, how has your, your your skill around networking helped with this? And like, how? Well, how I, I, is networking? it's so much easier now. I mean, you know, it's, as much as it's it's harder because there are more people in trying to do it music than mm -hmm. than, than there used to be. It's so much easier now because I mean, there was no internet. Um, uh, to, to, there was there was you know online uh, dial up, but there was no real internet in the eighties. Mm -hmm. So and and long distance phone calls. There were no cell phones as to speak of. And so you, when you left, you were you were like a travel sale. You were gone for three months, and you were out of touch. And you would meet people and go. So a lot of it was you would have to go a couple of times around the block, and you would have to spend a lot of time getting to know people in different towns. Mm -hmm. So. I would say that's you spend more time doing that on the road if you are going to be successful than you do sitting around even practicing your guitar. You're practicing how to be in this town again next year and have more people come see you. Mm -hmm. And and back in that day, you collected mailing lists and it, you had to you had to physically mail to every single person every time you were coming in their area, yeah. and that was expensive. You know, I mean, you know, even at fifteen cents a postcard. That adds up when you're when you're trying to get thousands of people motivated. Yeah, for sure. So it was a, a lot of that. And um, and I just kept running into really great people um, like New England is like Europe. There's all these tiny states up there. So you drive an hour or two in between you know, New England. I would go up in in September and I wouldn't come back till after January 1st because I would just Why? it's so cold up there. Oh, but the people are so warm. It That's just, true. That's true. Uh, I mean, they're amazing. I mean, they're they're more flinty when you first meet them. They're the kind of people who are standoffish when you first meet them. But mm -hmm. once they know and like you, here's my shirt. What do you need? You know, they're um, uh, totally. And, and so, it, and that the other thing was that you're you know, it, I, at first I was driving anywhere in the country a gig. So I'd have a gig in Chicago, and there's mm -hmm. an eight or ten hour drive to Chicago in the middle of winter, and then my next gig is in Ohio. And so, you know, so, so, yeah, so I started going, that doesn't work. Um, so then I started realizing you really got to do a pattern so that you're never more than a few hours from your gigs. And New England is perfect for that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The I my first, my yeah, first six months in New England and the people are incredible. But it was it was having the, the, the rods on the uh, on the fire escapes, the fire, <laughs> the fire uh, extinguishers that freaked me out. I'm like, why? What is that? They're like, oh, so that you can see where it is when there's, you know, six feet of snow. I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, not no. today. This this Fijian girl is not mm. about it. <laughs> you, got, you, got to, you got to have tire chains if you want to drive around New England. Oh, oh. Mm. I mean, I, I have Christmas in Iowa every year, but that's that's <laughs> yeah. the extent of it for me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, how has COVID and quarantine um, affected your work with SOAR? Well, um, it has, uh, it has made some things uh, easier and quieter because I'm not responsible for running all over town. Um, uh, but uh, trying to rise to the challenge of how to still be there for musicians was our big, um, our, our big challenge. So the first thing we did was we started a contest. Uh, uh, we, we started a streaming service we call Streamcatcher. Okay. And, and uh, there you go. There's a streamcatcher.org. And, um, and that uh, we, we, 
basically started a contest for the first two or three months of the COVID crisis where you write a song, you do a Zoom call, a recording of it, and then we'll put it up on a wall and there's these giant video walls of uh, like three to four to 500 um, videos and people can come in and just poke on them and vote for them. Mm -hmm. And the videos that got the most votes ended up winning. We, we had, we put $2,000 in prizes ahead. Um, uh, so, and we didn't ask for any entry fees on, we do ask oh. for entry fees in the mass, but we thought this is a crisis. Let's, let's just let everybody express and let's, you know, let's get them excited. So we put two grand in, in prizes up and we had a hell of a time. That's awesome. Uh, you know, making, uh, and, and we got a great response um, doing that. And, and then uh, we started supporting and, um, and helping people do online courses and do online open mics. And, and we're still developing that um, mm -hmm. uh, the, more and more of an online presence, which I think because of how long this is going to be a thing, um, you know, even after it's gone, I think this is something we'll keep doing anyway, even after we start all going out to clubs together. Right, right. Speaking of which, and I know that we haven't discussed talking about this, um, but people are starting to obviously have live live entertainment again. And yeah. there's been a bit of, um, I think, backlash or a little bit of confusion around what it means to be a social, like physically distant performer in public now. Yeah. Um, how are you, like, well, how it's so... We, we actually were, had, we're going to have our first physically distant concert that we, we have members who've been doing them. But right. because, uh, because we're a nonprofit that has to behave, we, we were sort of holding back, but we were going to, on July 12th, we were going to have a concert with um, the winners of the COVID contest I just told you about right. playing at the Strathmore Mansion and no audience allowed, we were gonna live stream it to people and just have the 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 entertainers come in one at a time. Uh, no more than 10 people would be in the room, including the four cameramen and the sound guy mm -hmm. and stuff. And we were gonna do that on July 12th, but um, people start, because of the re-upping of the numbers of COVID patients, um, our, our talent started to get a little nervous. So we have postponed that. We'll probably do it in another month um, or so. But we are, um, a bunch of our members have started to do socially distancing, distancing live performances with their band and then and then just uh, video projecting, which I think is relatively safe. Um, everything you do that gets in contact with other people, if you know anything about the way germs are, they're not political, they're not social, they don't care. They don't care any of that stuff. You can uh, you can believe what you want. They They transmit or they don't. And so every time you contact, you're in contact with someone, the potential is always there. But if you're just doing it carefully and you have responsible friends, you can do that and not take a big risk. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, can. yeah, I, I think the big issue is going to be uh, like the Birchmere is about to start having, letting people come to concerts pretty soon. And those guys are great. And they, you know, they are, they're a great music hall and they do, but they're, you know, trying to figure out, okay, you will have to wear a mask unless you're sitting at your table. If you get up to go to the bathroom or get up to go do anything, you have to put your mask, they have all these rules and if you break them, you're out of here. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I hope that those experiments uh, prove uh, uh, useful and worthy because we are not meant to be isolated like this. We are social creatures. Correct, yeah. And it's, it's been, you know, prevalent that, you know, a lot of the media have been saying that not only is this pandemic, you know, a, a health crisis, but that was isolation. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's, it is. Yeah, it's mental, emotional. And and out, out coming out of this, the elderly, uh, you know, and, and people with diseases are going to have to think, anybody with an immune um, uh, system that's compromised has to think, oh, I really, uh, just because everybody else is okay, I'm, I'm one of the people that's going to take out, uh, that it can be taken out. And once you get that in your head, it's really hard to, you know, just, oh, let's go out and let's, here, mwah, mwah, oh, hello, and um, and return to normal. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's going to be a road. It certainly is. This is one of the reasons why I got a cat during quarantine. Uh, yes. Like, I miss my hugs. I miss them so much. Yes. Well, <laughs> 
I am an official member of your Hug Mafia, and I'm going to collect mine when the time comes due. Oh, do not you worry. I was I was talking to the uh, the producer David Wardrick, who did the uh, the Save You From Yourself music video, and we were talking about for the next music video of having like a almost like a human condom to like to help yes. <laughs> you know sanitize the hugs. I'm like I'm, I'm missing them, man. I, I look forward to when we can hug again. Yes. <laughs> And I um, really, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's the the biggest thing is that there's all this unspoken stuff that is is gone, is missing from our lives, and uh, and when it comes back, it, it's going to be great, but it's also going to be weird for a while, just mm. to be social again. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. For trying to figure out how to navigate, and I know that the CDC is coming out with all kinds of quirky uh, suggestions on how we can. Oh well, yeah, I I feel really bad because I I I know people from the NIH and stuff, and and they're you know scientists are trying to figure this out, and they're saying we don't know. Here's our best guess, and then the news people go, this is what they're saying now, and and what they're what, what, if you hear some talk go, this is our best guess, but when you you know polio they understand, you know uh, AIDS they understand, uh, herpes they under they understand these diseases because they've been studying them for years. COVID is a new thing, yeah. and anybody who says they know what it is. I mean, anyone who says, I know definitively this is what it is, don't trust them. They, they, they nope. can't possibly know that yet. Nope. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, it, it's a, uh, and unfortunately in that vacuum, politics ends up being the awful thing that kind of injects itself in, into all this and, and politics and, and disease control should be not friends. You know, they shouldn't, they, they shouldn't be tied together because we're all affected by diseases, no matter who we are, and we really yeah. should not turn any of this into a political question. But it, the, unfortunately, that where uh, in this country now everything turns into—I mean, you know, what toothpaste you use is a political argument. What do you mean? I mean, who? And that, yeah. Oh, this is a wormhole that we could get lost in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh... And, okay. and, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the flip side of that is that. I really love what's happening, you know, um, the all of the, the the COVID crisis, the incredible um, pain and suffering of the Black Lives um, Matter crisis, the LBGQ um, uh, awakening, all of those things have come together to create a much stronger awareness and sensitivity to people. And I'm sort of hoping that translates into better politics, I, I, good I politics, I would love to see more of. I totally agree. I totally agree. It's it's the reason why I'm kind of getting tongue tied is because it's been a rude awakening to see how quickly, how, how just how different the, the the political the political climate in in the states works compared to New Zealand, Australia, Fiji, England. You know, um, and thank you for bringing up the BLM, uh, you know, movement. Obviously, you know, during as we talked, you know, having the pandemic is one health crisis being isolated is another health crisis human rights um are also a really big part of human you know human functionality and and, and i think that having people at home and isolated having to watch uh, uh george floyd die while very painful uh, it, it it reminded me and uh, this really reminds me because i was still i was alive in 68 and um and actually got gassed and arrested back then, um, protesting the war in Vietnam. Right. This reminds me of that time where we were seeing on TV what was happening in Vietnam. We were going, I don't know, you know, I'm, I love my country, but that's wrong. That's mm. just wrong. Mm -hmm. And and I think the same thing happened. I think the convergence of COVID and that um, that incident and the, and the use of cameras to reveal what is really going on has created a consciousness that no one could turn away from because there was no Oh, I got to go to work. I can't. Oh, I don't have time to look at this. Everybody right. in the country was like, "What?" And yeah. and I really, th I hope. The the problem is this is very much like uh, if you know the story of Emmett Till, um, the the boy, the fourteen year old boy who started the um, the, the Civil Rights Act in in uh, he's ten years before that, his brutal murder and the fact that his mother was so brave and having an uh, you know an open cask and say no look at what they did to my son and every newspaper in the country again when when people when americans are faced with horror or, or evil or wrongdoing when they can't turn away from it they generally start doing the right thing the problem is it's so easy in this culture of distractions to not have to not to yeah. see or own up to what's really going on and that may be one of the good things that comes out of this is we were isolated we couldn't stop watching trump 
do all that silly stuff he does mm -hmm. and we couldn't stop watching what cops are doing and 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 cops are not to blame they're you know the system is to blame and and cops are just put in this really really awful position and and it uh you know to me it's about changing who we are and then the, all these other things will change yeah and, and I, I i hope yeah, no, I 1000% I, I agree with you. And for anybody who's watching this at the moment who isn't aware, uh, who isn't in the States and therefore is not quite aware of the history of this, um, Emmett Till uh, was a young boy who was accused by a white woman. He was a person, he was a black a black boy um, who was accused by a white woman uh, of wolf whistling at her and as a result um, was brutally murdered. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean that story. He was kidnapped in front of his family. He was down visiting his aunt. He's they, yeah. they just go into their house with guns, take him away, and they can't get the police to do anything. Three days later, they find his body, and, and that that story uh, in, in the 1950s is is part of the reason why the uh, the movement of Martin Luther King and stuff like that had so much support among mm -hmm. um, clueless white people because mm -hmm. they saw they saw that and they went, no, that's wrong. I get it. That's wrong. And mm -hmm. I think that's what George Floyd did for for uh, so many people who who you know when they first heard Black Lives Matter they did that oh but all lives matter don't you and you know they did that whole ridiculous thing and then they saw that and they went oh I see what you mean this is a special thing that's happening that we need to focus on and that's why you use that term and that's why that that is a a term we should respect yeah and, and yeah. I, I watched so many people be converted by that horror into you know you're they're right. No, we gotta we gotta call it Black Lives Matter, and we gotta take it seriously. Yeah, for sure. I, I've I've adopted recently a term um, for the white friends in my life um, who are woke. I call them light and brighters, um, mm -hmm. of which obviously you are one. Um, for for those in your life who are not yet, they're they're, they're lighters, but they're not maybe as as bright to the cause yet. Um, how how are you? How are you navigating those relationships? I, I mean, I, I all of the all of the possible. I you know, for the people who are unapologetically racist, uh, I have never had any time at any point mm -hmm. in my life for and and I you know and for people who um, who who revel in the pain and suffering of others because they think it's our it's to our advantage. Uh, there's no been no point in my life where that's been okay, mm -hmm. and so uh, um, but. I do believe that part of the burden of of social justice and of changing people is you can't you can't become racist yourself even against horrible people because that ends up creating this us against them which mm -hmm. is where where all of this otherism which which is what all racism is really about this tribal sense of things you just you just you just make that worse and so you have to have the the mindset of a, a Gandhi or a Mandela. I mean, you, you look at the example of Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Mandela, Thoreau, all these great people who said, no, you must always rise above and you mm -hmm. you, you hate the sin, love the sinner, that, that, that kind of that, that, those kind of expressions. I try and I say I fail a lot, but I try to bring that into conversations with people who are um, defiantly unwoke. You know, as, right. you, as you might call them, because they're 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 out there, and they think, no, no, you're just talking a bunch of liberal gibberish, and this is the reality. Here I am, and what I try to do is 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 not um, not get angry at them so much as not submit to their not 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 go along with. I said, no, I can't accept that. You you know, you wouldn't like that if they, you were treated that way. I I, I keep uh, always trying to. I think Daryl Davis. Have you run into Daryl Davis yet here in DC? He's a, he's a, he's a great friend of mine. Um, yeah, uh, you know, he's a personal friend of mine. <laughs> he's a brilliant, brilliant man. Yeah, and 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 what he did back when it was really hard to do, and what he still does, is that you know he walks among people and and wh why do you feel that way? What do you? He, he asks them questions and gives them a, a sense of his seeing their humanity, and in doing so, he he doesn't convert everybody, but he does convert people all the time to oh maybe I see your point. He's got over over 50, 50 PKK uh, robes in his PKK in his robes. closet. Yeah, Incredible. and not many black men have a wardrobe quite like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yet to meet uh, you know another personally. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that that's that's a really great perspective. Thank you for sharing that. Um, for so for how are you in amongst all the muck? Um, mm -hmm. How are you 
managing to stay positive and, and empowered and, Who and says resilient. I, am? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, I break down once a you day. Can yeah. be empowered and cry. Yes, I, yeah. Let me, you know, no, let yeah. me, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, you know, uh, for, for me, being, again, uh, the thing that keeps me positive is how can I be of help? How can I be of service? And in the process of doing that, my own troubles seem to just kind of take a back seat. Uh, and right. so, uh, you know, I this has been a very busy time for SAW, for um, for uh, the people who are working on this stuff and, and you know, pulling off co-video, pulling off uh, community day with 15 courses going on at the same time and, and make music day the next day. And that was all last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to doing all these things um, is, you know, uh, opening the mass contest this week where, so we're, I'm sitting there, you know, we're the geeks who actually do all the programming too. We, in, in order to have money on, to spend on these programs, my friend Kelly Diamond and I, we, we just do all this stupid scut work ourselves because that's how we have 20 or 30 grand every year to spend on the months of programs we try to do. And, um, and so doing that, you know, because I'm doing that, there's less time to be sitting around going, you know, uh, feeling bad about things. I also mm -hmm. am blessed, you know, I'm still living with my, you know, I've got two kids at home with my wife and, and family and, um, and they're there. I have friends who I'm still really connected with. So, so I have a, a, a support system of people to, to interact with mm -hmm. and, uh, none of that's perfect, but but it's there and it's right. part of how I live. Yeah, yeah. What would you say to those who don't have that support system? Like, I know a lot of people have been, you know, home alone. I mean, I've got one housemate who I, you know, who's here permanently, but, um, you know, I went out and got a cat because yeah. I miss dogs so much. So, <laughs> and she's great. But, you know, like, beyond being I, a fur baby mom, like, <laughs> What you, what's your, uh, you know, I, I've been trying to project into that because any other time in my life besides these, this period, I would be alone. Cause I, you know, like most, a lot of performers, you know, you're, you're either on the road or you're gone all the time. And, and I've been used to being, uh, I, I think, you know, again, we have this connection of we're, we're, you and I are connected right now to some mm -hmm. degree. And this is a gift because in every other time in history, this wasn't here. So there is this gift of being able to 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 phone people, to video phone people, to text them, to um, to write. You know, it used to be you had to write a letter or mm -hmm. make a very expensive phone call because mm -hmm. uh, it it was four dollars a minute to talk to people in the 1980s if they were two states away. Wow. Yeah, and and I mean, cell phones while they're expensive, they're not nowhere near as expensive as long distance used to be. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, so, I mean, using the tools we have and and working on yourself. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the other thing is that um, self-love is one of those things you have to work on. You have to teach, you have to, you have to, you have to live, learn and teach in order to just generate enough self-love to have it keep feeding you. And, and this is a time where you learn about that. And I'm, I'm not just talking about touching yourself. I'm talking <laughs> about um, self-love, but that it's there too, but, uh, but I'm talking about um, the, um, the you know that that sense of the fact that working on who you are and how you how you show up everywhere um, in in these online spaces wherever you can how you sh you know the the people who show up and wear a mask even though they're mm -hmm. uncomfortable with it they're they're practicing other and self love when they do that yeah no brilliant perfect and uh, yeah uh, first of all I, I just want to masturbation is totally fine just just as a, as yeah, a no I'm. If that, is, if that is how you want to practice self-love, I'm a fan. Totally, I'm a fan. Totally down with it. It's <laughs> it's sex with someone I like, you know. I, that's a... and you know what you like, right? Mm. Um, but no, I, I think that's a really really valid point. Is that um, you know, I, I think there was a rude awakening because there's so many people, especially in Western society, that place so much emphasis on who they are by what they do. Right. And yes, so when, okay. when all of that, when, when your nine to five is taken away, how can we, how can we still, still identify and still claim, oh, I'm here because I'm important, you know, I'm still important because, and I think that's been a really rude awakening for a lot of people is that, yeah. you know, how can you love somebody that you don't understand? One of my favorite sayings at the moment is you can't find your soulmate 
if you don't even recognize your own soul. Yeah, no, exactly. And and so that 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 is one of the things. There's there's a lot of you know uh, it's very difficult for people who are um, uh, tr who are triggered mainly by outside adulation by 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 uh, affirmations from outside themselves mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. those are those are harder to come by, and right. so you have to learn how to create affirmation and also how to share affirmation so that you can be part of feeding. I, I you know you feed other people it feeds you back. Um, the connections I'm making now um, are as important and as valuable as the ones I made when I was able to be social. I, I just go about them differently. Yeah, yeah. I love that you bring up affirmations. I've recently been um, nose deep in in affirmations. Uh, in fact, I've got 11 of them written on my wall. So the first thing I'll see when I wake up are these affirmations. Do you have any affirmations that you, you know, subscribe to personally? Uh, not, I mean, I don't think, I think I'm one of those people who uh, finds affirmations. Uh, um, I, I'm always trying to find the positive in what I'm talking about. Even when, in fact, when uh, one of the struggles when you're fighting with somebody is how, and, 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 and it's in conflict where a lot of the difficult, nasty stuff, how do you find a positive way to approach what the issue is and how mm -hmm. do you find out? And so for me, it's really, uh, it's not so much about the slogan as the, um, as your intent, as the way you approach uh, things. And, um, and I can be pretty pugnacious about uh, uh, things, but at the end of the day, I let it go. And, um, and, and oh, thank you. I, I mean, I, sometimes people who are the, who piss me off the most are people I'm grateful for because they challenge me to think about why do I feel that way? And what am I, and what, is there something missing here? Or did I, you know, am I right to be angry about that? Or is this talking about something that's lacking in me? And if somebody challenges me like that, um, I may in the moment go, man, fuck you. But, but in the, <laughs> in the long term, uh, those challenges end up helping me define myself and, and be stronger. So I try and don't always succeed to find that affirmative way to take the, uh, you know, my share of the blame in a, in a conflict and to be um, uh, generous in the way that I fight with people. That's an incredible mindset. Yeah. And right. when you can attain it, it is, I, and I will say, I, you, you ask, you know, ask anybody who knows me, they go, yeah, he, he succeeds about 25% of the time. I mean, no, I mean, it, it's one of the, I think one of the magical superpowers of being a musician, right, is being able to take, I, I kind of, describe a lot of the musicians in my life and someone is in my life as alchemists they can mm -hmm. take the bullshit find a garden write some dope music and mm -hmm. you know you've channeled that negativity into something positive and beautiful um yes. so you know you're just doing the same thing but with person-to-person -person communication and that that's great that's yeah incredible. And, and, and i would you know i don't have a religion i subscribe to or anything like that so for me this comes uh, you know, from my com the, my community of people, and from the way I interact, and um, and I uh, I think my favorite slogan that I would use, and I put it up every once in a while, is "Let a smile be your foxhole." Be your foxhole. Mm -hmm. Foxhole. Is what, is. A foxhole is what the uh, soldiers used to dig in World War One to hide in from the bullets. They would dig a hole and and try to stay underneath all the fire. And um, and they call them foxholes because you would you would dig them in and all going all across Europe or anything like that. You, they would dig trenches and that way they they'd be hidden from the fire. And so I love like, that saying. Yeah. Now that I know oh. what a foxhole is, but I love that. Saying. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, yeah. that may be the the saying I like the most about that, things. That's cool. That I I I, as we say in New Zealand, too much. Mm -hmm. Like that's yeah. awesome. Um, so what are you working on at the moment? But you know, you've got this upcoming. Well, we just spent the day testing and retesting the uh, the Mid Atlantic Song Contest. We're mm -hmm. testing the software. In fact, that's what I'll be doing after this. I'll be trying to break it because we don't want to we don't want to put it out until all of this is done online. You can you can you can uh, sign up, um, download your music and your lyrics and 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 your video because we have video uh, part of the contest now. Um, and you can do all that online, but we have to make that sure that works because we're, we're building these things ourselves. So yeah. we're doing some of that. And then um, there are there are a number of um, 
summer initiatives to do music because um, I'm also on the board of Focus Music and I also run venues for Focus Music. We're trying to um, have more um, people from outside this area do uh, concerts that will be either uh, pay what you can or paywalled so we can create for the next you know seven months or a year some normalcy of having people who would ordinarily come to this town come to this town digitally yeah so working on that that's cool and you're also organizing a whole bunch of like not just concerts but also online workshops, workshops toolboxes um that, that the, the, you know we're an educate saw as an educational organization so how to um how to how to uh record your music we had you know omega recording um uh, Q recording, um, uh, um, Urban Garden, and um, a, a couple other recording studios all did presentations on uh, Community Day, showing how to come into the studio and this is how this is the see here's what we do and here's how to approach us and and things like that. Um, so we will continue and uh, try to do more of those uh, because you can keep developing as a musician, as a recording artist, and all these things. You have all this free time. I, I expect, as I tell everybody, I expect this uh, baby boom of songs to come out of uh, out of this um, isolation. <laughs> baby boom of songs. I love it. How often are you writing at the moment? I am. You know, I'm just starting to write again. I uh, I started getting distracted, and I probably um, we've been we've been writing uh, song parodies. We do we do political song parodies. Uh, we do. Um, original songs in a lot of different styles. But but the last three or four months, I've probably only written two or three songs uh, because I've just been so distracted with this other stuff and mm -hmm. I'm itching to get back to it. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, th I feel like you sort of, you touched on this already, but I'm really curious, what is your why? What is my why? Yes. My, you know, um, I, I think connection, communication, and change for the better are, are the three whys for me. I like it. I like it a lot. Is there anything that you've learned about yourself uh, during quarantine? That I need to bathe often. <laughs> Honestly, the best policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that I, snore, that I snore more than I thought I did. How, hold up. How did that come up? Because uh, I I'm sleeping at different times than other people, and they keep coming over and going, stop that. And, and I don't, right. so then so then somebody records me and goes, yeah, this is what it sounds like when you're here. Um, so uh, not that I I didn't know that I snored, but I I found that out. Um, I I think the other thing is I'm going through a lot of you know I'm 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 going through a lot of challenges in my and, and I'm. I'm starting to find bedrock in myself from uh, through and from this um, because that's what you have to do, and it's not always a, it's it's not always a simple or easy process. There are days when I'm really, you know, you know, is this what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my, you know, what what you know, what's happening to me? Yeah. What, where do I fit in? Do I really? Uh, I, there are days when I question, am I going to just keep doing all this saw and all the other things, or should I maybe stop that because I have creative things I could be doing just for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I question those things all the time and I'm looking at them all the time. And and one of the things about this time is that you have time to think about that stuff. Yeah. And then and, and uh, the struggle is to think about it in a way that helps, not in a way that locks you up or, or just brings you down. Have you found a way to implement more balance in your life, both during quarantine and, and post? Uh, I, I think that's that's still I mean, to be honest, I don't know. I think in some ways, yes, but um, I'm I'm doing more cooking with with, with my kids than I ever have. Uh, and, and, we, and we did a lot before this. But but now it's every day, uh, you know, just trying to have that normalcy of a meal time and, and things like that. And, and those are really good balancing things. Um, uh, but I, I think whether that whether what's happening to me now makes me a better, more balanced person is something I'm going to see. And I don't want to presume that it's, I know, I hope it's happening, but I don't want to presume that it is. <laughs> Spoken no. like a true Buddhist. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, because, you know, that it's that whole idea of, you know, don't get too uh, cocky about the fact that you're surviving, you know, uh, be aware all the time. The way you keep from falling down is to keep your footing. 
Yeah. And even when you're happy, especially when you're happy, maybe. No, I, I feel that 100%, 100%. Um, cool. Is, now we, we talked about the Make Music Day, we talked about songwriting competition, we talked about Community Day, we talked about all the amazing humans that you, um, that you've been, you know, connecting people with and have connected with over over the last however old you are, like, <clears throat> 21 years that you've been alive. Yes. Um, <laughs> is there is there anything else that you kind of a message of hope, a message of love, a message of empowerment that you want to spread with the world? Um. Yeah, I, I, I and I get a little bit uh, embarrassed when I think about that. Um, I, I think um, uh, you know, really 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 right now find your center and feed it uh, you know because that's the gift of this time yeah. you have the time to find you know people talk about oh i don't have time to to navel gaze i don't have time to th this is the time if there ever was a time for you to really really you know get to the core yourself and figure out what is it because you know if if you had known you were going to have this time what would you have done to get yourself ready for it and if you know that you're going to be out in the world in a year from now and things are going to, you're going to go back to the blah, 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 blah of your life, what are you doing now to get ready for that so that you're a better person? So find that center of yourself and mm. start feeding it in a way that will make you, because um, it wouldn't it be great if everybody comes out of this and they're just a little bit better about, about how they treat the world, about how they treat each other and about how they, they treat themselves. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that so much. Thank you so much for your time, Jay. I really oh, appreciate know it. Your, your, um... Saw.org, go and find out what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> no, your, your magic, your, uh, you know, your messages of empowerment are, you know, brilliant. So thank you so much for being here. Yes, everybody who's watching, saw.org, uh, go and check it out. Streamcatcher.org as well, go and check it out. Um, be good to each other, guys. Spread love like it's going out of fashion. Be your own kind of superhero. And please, for the love of saving the world, make sure you call your mum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can control it.